Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. Welcome if you're currently here in the live chat. Appreciate it. Today, didn't really get time to um, do a proper video, but we're going to be just taking a look at some comments and uh, the forum as well, discussion in between. I've noted down and made a, a video list of things that need to be done, including the suggestion last night of the map analysis of the campus, the witnesses. Just need to map that out on a project on Google Earth, pinpoint it and um, talk talk it through there because it does help as a prompt as we do go along. Um, has anything else happened since? Not that I know of. Take a look at the comment section very briefly from last night's video. If you haven't already checked it out, make sure to check the link which is in the pinned comment section after watching this if you want to. Uh, try not to spend as much time this time because it's kind of like dragged on a bit recently. Uh, the only thing that I will uh, also give my opinion of is uh, another observation slash prediction, okay, of what could happen within this Dylan Rounds case community. More about that later when more people have joined because I know not everyone joins at the same time. So let's just check out the comment section, comments of the previous video, any discussion about Dylan Rounds, what was talked about, is there any questions that need answering, any key information that's, you know, come about since. We'll find out now. Okay, so here we are. Just uh, range it from the newest comment and start from the bottom. What does Joseph Lloyd have to say? All the twisting of the statements by Mini-Me today was ridiculous. Taylina wouldn't answer why she puts money on Brenner's books. I don't have any reason to hassle anybody. I just want to know the simple answers. If you don't have anything to hide, you're putting money on Brenner's books. You've obviously talked to him. Why would you help a man that took Dylan's life? I mean this, uh, wait, uh, Mini-Me. All oh, right. Wouldn't answer why she put money. Wait, so is Joseph talking about Mini-Me and Taylina in a negative way? And a bit about saying Taylina wouldn't answer why she puts money on the books. That's to do with the not for you account, supposedly Taylina. But Taylina talked in third person to make it seem like it wasn't her. The not for you account, Sam. So getting really confusing now. Joseph lost a temper yesterday by Linda. When the road ends, yesterday was a circus in the chat. Is this to do with last night or the night before? Because it was like two on the trot, wasn't there? Joseph, what's with someone asking who you are? They can't see you're a duck. Oh yeah, because of the profile picture. I had a blast. I just don't think it's fair for Salty and Taylina to bully Weezer and Ellen over a fence post. Yeah, I don't know what all that was about. You could tell there's like a bit of hounding and repetition going on. Like, not just asking questions, but more interrogation. And it doesn't always work, that method. Linda, some of the stuff said in chat yesterday was disgusting. I said to Warlike Raph, only three to four of us are actually really paying attention. It's turning into a shit show in chat. That's why I said what I said yesterday. I, for one, I'm sick of reading about slapping a and deep throat. People need to grow the hell up. Warlike Raph is the only one I watch because of the sick drama wasn't there now. It's her. Yeah, I mean, to an extent, it's probably like three to four people that do actually pay attention. I uh, kind of, like, list them off the top of my head. Not quite. Linda, Christy, Tom Evans, you know. Uh, Andrew Culver, if he shows up today, I'm going to block him so I don't see his lies and get pissed off. Joseph says, I thought it was really interesting they feel the need to point the direction towards anything but Brenner. Why? I think it's because if Brenner finds out he's asked, it's going to get caught to tell everyone about everyone. So as your chat room is outstanding, I've gotten better information this week than I've gotten for months. Well, that's good to hear by Tom. Um, interesting, though, because you got the dis you got the you know, the separation between people that do watch and do listen and take it in and they don't like the way the chat's gone, but then you've got the odd person that does take it in and also appreciates the chat. So I guess it's all kind of mixed. But as for Linda's point of view, yeah, I do understand, you know. I mean, look, this is the reality. It's uh, different for me because I'm the one making the video. Actually, do you know what? I probably can... Um, Diff like more facial this because it's an important key point to make. Yeah, what I was trying to say then was um, at the end of the day, if, if like the chat here goes to complete shit, like it's a complete circus act, crazy whatever, 
It doesn't so much impact me as negatively as it may impact other people who are viewing because it's easier for me because I've made the video, I've created it, I've talked about it and uh, put all the focus and effort into that so by the time I'm finished I might be a bit drained of thoughts or thinking on the spot so I just like settle back but for the other people that actually want to learn and listen whilst trying to focus on the video it's not quite helping with the chat maybe. Um, can you actually hide the chat yourself as a viewer? I don't think you can. Do you anything you can do? And okay, can I'll suggest it right now if it's um, quite problematic. If whatever reason uh, humans in the chat are causing any disruption to you um, whilst you're trying to listen, whilst you're trying to watch the video, the one way you can remove the distraction of the chat box is if you click full screen on my video. You get full screen and then that live chat you can't see, okay? So that's just the other way around it. Um, does the chat negatively impact me? Not really, because I, I've done the video earlier, so all that effort, all that focus and time spent on it and editing was done then. Now it's time just to kind of sit back, although that's probably not the best way of wording it, that's just being honest, and then casually talk in the chat, which then I guess can conflict with other people taking it more serious and then some of the other people that might not be taking it serious whatsoever and it's just a complete piss take. I mean, there's all different angles to look at it, okay? But as for Joseph, as for Linda, if um, they ever do get pissed off or annoyed, then they don't have to apologize because uh, they've been around long enough. They've uh, watched just about every single video or at least catched up on every single video. So, you know, they're long time viewers, you know, they shouldn't be driven away or pushed away you know if they if they need to uh, complain or say shit whatever you can because you've been around long enough so um yeah i was mentioning i was going to mention that other point that prediction but i think it's still too early to bring it up at this moment in the chat so let's just get back to the comments and just go and read them okay uh, not for you does actually leave a comment here taylina did not say anything to weezer or ellen don't spread lies so while some people have said not for you is Taylina, this comment here is would be interpreted as talking in third person, which is um, kind of confusing, right? It's a little bit weird, but it's not the first time we've seen it. When, when other channels, like more known ones, you know who I'm talking about, have done their comments, uh, they've ended up talk, talking, typing in third person as well, and it's like... Like, what, what are you trying to do? It's like, is it like hiding one's identity while still getting a point across? Could be. Maybe it's because people have been exposed in the past, so they're trying harder now to appear more anonymous while still defending themselves or defending others. I don't know, but all kinds of psychological warfare and effects can happen and take place. You know, I've seen it in fucking gaming, video games, about fucking pathetic humans in a game. So if it happens there, 10 times more likely it's gonna happen in real life or a real life situation, kind of like this, right? Tom Evans, can you, can you people help me from a timeline for Robert and Chase on Friday? Joseph, good thing to lose your temper. You ask good questions, don't back down. I respect you very much, yep. Uh, not about Dylan, but they're hiding something. They don't want Brenner to know anything like he's going to have to beat the death penalty, so they keep him happy and keep him quiet. It's going to come out, watch and see. What's this one? Because they're threatening me for asking good questions. They don't want anybody to ask questions. Criminals always do this bully bullshit. The fun part is going to be when they find out who I actually am. And by then, they will have proven I have a point. Otherwise, why bother? You're not hiding anything. It doesn't matter. Why won't they answer the question about putting money on Brenner's books? And why does it take six of them to jump you when you ask a specific question? Taylina wouldn't answer, but Minimi's going to twist the question. They're pissed off because bullshit isn't working. I mean, you know, weird, kind of weird that I've not been targeted in a negative way, but of course there's always time that things can go to shit. But then again, I'm not asking too many questions, am I? Joseph is a bit more about questioning, which is good, when well, he does. 
Um, I mean, I might have asked, not for you, the odd question or something, but there was no response. Or like when they appeared in the chat, I said something and it was completely blank. So you can tell so like there's a level of attitude going on there. Just yet more grievances. What's this one? No, you, Taylor, has Salty to do that for you as usual? If you're not hiding anything, what's the big problem? The Chase narrative doesn't fly after nine months because it's BS. Why are you putting money on Brenner's books? You've talked to Brenner. If you're putting money on Brenner's books and there's not a crime in that town that the Wadsworths aren't within one degree of we know the truth. It's all going to come out. Well, you're the only one making yourself look bad by lying. If Hunter finds out, it's, it's going to flip, spill the beans. Okay. You're a Taylina. Okay. It's all going to come out. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, talk here. We'll just try and read it. The question is why. It doesn't make sense why I put money on his books unless they're trying to discourage him from talking and with you sum it up big time. Another stupid scenario is why they're trying to say that as something in Washington State being held, especially Quincy, Washington, considering there's a sheriff's department on the corner less than 20 miles down the road. There's a federal penitentiary. The place they're talking about is a vacation rental. It's $3,500 a month. Bring him to Washington State when they could hide him in Utah. They could hide him in Idaho, 26 mile radius, which is loosened. That's what's interesting. The person lived there. Oh, wait, did it just close off that? Oh, fuck's sake. Did I read it all? No, I didn't. So why does it fucking shut off? Oh my god. Right, how far down are we? I don't even know now. Right, read that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here we are. All these crazy rabbit holes. True. Pointing the finger. Chase weren't trying to keep Brenner from talking. They lied. I've listened to every single stream from week one. Sheep, I heard them change up again and again. And then the original two video, three videos disappear. Sheep, the attack Salty made on me yesterday. And offering $500 to find out who I am. They don't want to find out who I am, Linda. But I hope they do. What is going on with Ty Corbin versus Shack Lady? She's on Salty's stream again. It's all BS. And it's all come out sooner than they think. Right. So, it looks as if some of my viewers now are getting attacked by other humans out there. That's typical, isn't it? Hmm. You can see more patterns emerge externally. Hmm. I mean, there'll be methods to uh, reduce cancer, cancerous humans. There'll be methods which may need to be reintroduced on uh, my videos in the future, if necessary. Not for you. Do you think I owe you any explanation? Hell no. Get lost. So this person's got an attitude problem. Seems evident. No, you don't owe me anything. I'm more than anything feels sorry for you. And it's really sad seeing people as morally disorientated as you. You know what people do to themselves. Just remember the truth. Okay. i just leave it there because it's quite a lot of external talk. Lone Wolf says, could it be Dylan is alive in the witness protection program and all hell getting ready to break loose around that city. It's all about to come out soon. I mean, it looks like people are bracing for impact, right? It's going to hit hard. I mean, we do a poll right now. Do you think it's all going to come out very soon or not? Feel free to vote. Do I think Dylan is in some kind of witness protection program? Um, not really, personally. But if he was, maybe it's because he saw something he wasn't supposed to. He managed to escape or managed to report it or something like that. And there's people after him, people that don't, you know. Maybe that's why some people didn't want to search for Dylan originally because they don't. Well, actually, no. Hmm. No, if, if people were after Dylan, then they would try everything they could to find Dylan, right? So then they could get a hold of him and have a piece of word with them. Hmm. H2O Ocean. 29 for Dylan idea that he's finding a new plan for finances. He incurs a difficulty he doesn't back down from. Should look to help for it. A Leo will argue when need is in him. Also, they own a boss. I'm not quite sure what that was talked about there. The whole of that week end is towards finances. Jim Sagittarius, if right, he made a harmonious deal or financial decision on May 29th. Don't have Chase as anyone his birthday. I'm a bit confused by that. That's really good. Glorin Dellen is the only one I know would probably have Brenner's birthday. 
I'm sure one of our buddies here will find out. Okay. What's this? Blacked out and only a month. Still wasn't asking on that one. You all seem to want to stroke your prejudices then bring justice. Seems like you already know enough to report, but have your own flipping ways. Sorry for my print. What the hell is going on here? Oh my god. An idea, Jim, it didn't do... I just can't understand the language. I sometimes think someone is at a place I'm thinking my bad. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I can't understand any of that shit, to be honest. Okay. Wanda, sorry I missed you went live. That's fine, you'll be able to catch up. Here we go, we've got Bob. Bob's back. Hello, Raph. My thoughts were Dylan and his father had no relationship. As a father and son, he... Also, didn't even talk to his younger brother, Colton. Not sure about his sister if they talked. It was his grandparents that took care of him, and they did a great job with him. They treated him very well. Okay, interesting point by Bob. I mean, the younger brother, Colton. I've heard of that name mentioned previously when uh, Doug from No Thanks kept referring to him, and then Candice Cooley would say what Colton's up to or how Colton is doing in life and stuff. So it was... Some relationship there, right? Candy's Cooley and Colton, but I don't know about Justin. But, yeah, this is the thing, because I've not really heard Justin talk much. He's not really done that many interviews, or not many at all, independently. You, you can't hear it from his side of the story, so it kind of makes it a bit difficult to understand as a whole, so you end up maybe siding with one person over the other. It's kind of unfortunate, that. Bob says that comment is Tanner Brady's parents. This comment, what Bob's talking about, is that screenshot I presented in my previous video, the Facebook post by that woman on the Find Dylan Rounds Facebook page, talking about Rigby and her son staying with Dylan during the winter time or so, and commenting on how good and hard worker Dylan was. And okay, so that's the context behind that. Tanner Brady's parents, he lived with Dylan for six months. They are and only more family spoke out about Dylan was the coach from a local school whose son hung around Dylan. But other than that, no other residents have made any comments. Very sad for a young man who is well known in the town of Rigby. No, sorry, sometimes I type too fast. That's okay, Bob. I understand most of what you say, so it's it's fine. Um, What else was I going to say? So that talk about, the only other person talking about Dylan was the coach from a local school. Is that coach, the same coach that... Um, at the like right at the beginning, I think maybe before the family came round, the coach that went to Dylan's farm to take photos of the trailer inside of it. You remember those photos? Baseball coach. Is this the same person here you're talking about, Bob? Because I have heard of it briefly previously. Okay. Bob. I want to thank you for reading my comments, no problem, in the chat. Sorry I missed your live again. I know when you write comments and say things in chat, that people have to turn stuff inside out and try to make a person like myself something that I'm not. My childhood was similar to Dylan's. My mother was not a good person towards me more than my brothers or sisters. Sorry to hear that, Bob. Um, Bob says... Today, a few hours ago, Doug, the idiot from No Thanks, was in Salty's room telling people who's getting arrested next week and who's not. This guy should keep his goddamn mouth shut if he knows how to shut the hell up. I don't know how he got this information from Can Candace and if she gave it to him. Wait, Candace? I thought it was Candice. Well, I've been saying Candice Cooley wrong. Is it Candace Cooley? I'm confused. Um, shame on her also. Keep your mouth shut. That why Ellie won't tell her nothing. Doug, you are a disgrace. Keep your mouth shut, you moron. He told Kurt he is not getting arrested, but Chris Lloyd is. Unreal. Oh, God. I mean, if that really is the case, because obviously I've not been listening again, if that's what really did happen, then that's, that's definitely not going to help. I mean... If Doug was drunk at the time, then it kind of explains why it was said and everything. I mean, if it was on, like, Doug's own channel, saying all that personal information and stuff going on in the background, he probably would have deleted his stream afterwards. But if it was on someone else's platform, channel, they might they might keep the video up, right? God, what a mess. 
Bob. I have to sometimes wonder if they took Dylan away from Kurt on purpose, knowing that it would hurt Kurt because of their rel- their friendship. Kurt said today on Salty's show he's afraid to walk his dogs outside because they are after him. What a horrible way to have to live right now. I'd carry two guns on me, and if anyone came towards me, I'd put them out and tell them, get the hell out of here. And if they don't leave, well then, protect myself with a few rounds in the ground where they are. Like a warning shot, maybe. I really think that to live out there in Montello, you have to do one thing and one thing only. Know how to lie and tell lies. I don't think anyone out there knows anything different. What a sad place to live. I hope next week we all get the answers we all want to hear. I have met many nice folks on here from the area of the country. I'm glad to have talked to many of them the past nine months. Oh, chat lady, Lee's kind. This is what I mean. It Does it feel like it's coming to a conclusion? I'm not quite sure. It does. Something feels like something's happened somewhere. Definitely. Like the whole atmosphere, the whole uh, the gears are shifting and people's knowledge is changing uh, or maybe advancing. Um, mm, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that shortly because it is important. Shack Lady says, I've noticed a few issues that may need to be addressed. A lot of the information we all have gotten on the air started by individuals that obtained gossip or insert, insertion. I do believe Kurt is innocent and his family has been scrutinised to the fullest. Even other locals because of the result of gossip in a small town. I mean, all I'll say is, this is me responding to the Shack Lady at this moment in time. I am somewhat suspicious of Kurt Wadsworth. I do question this and that. But it's not from what other people have said or all the other rumours and talking gossip. Really. Like with the the polygraph test, not participating in that. And Kurt switching and changing with information. Like when you look back at some clips... I know some people say he's consistent, but then other people have said he's not. I know other people have watched those interviews. Older ones, newer ones, and compared and contrast, right? That's how they've been able to notice the difference. Of course, I've done the same thing with Candice Cooley interviews, where I've noticed slip-ups, mistakes made, contradictions, etc., right? So, same could be happening here, from the looks of it. So, I just say, Kurt's behaviour... Kurt's lack of action here or there has caused that suspicion, that questioning from at least my point of view, okay? Maybe some other people are suspicious of Kurt, but that's for other reasons and hearing about gossip and stuff and, you know, etc. I mean, Candice Cooley, at the end of the day, if you were to look up to Candice Cooley and believe in what she says or have some kind of hope in her, from the looks of it, up, up until now, Candice Cooley has not been suspicious that much of Kurt Wadsworth and the Wadsworth family. So could that tell something? Could that reveal something? Maybe. But I I honestly think if Kurt Wadsworth did a polygraph test, it just would have made things a lot easier and a little bit less disruptive. Let me know if you agree. Okay. We'll do a poll right now. Do you feel or do you think that if Kurt Wadsworth took a polygraph test despite resisting after all this time, would it clear up some of the suspicion around him? You know what I'm saying? Like if you're innocent, you've got nothing to hide. Okay, you might be sad, might be emotional because of what's happened to Dylan, but you know, if there's true emotion behind it, then it should be raw, it should be honest, somewhat caring and positive, right? If it's cold, no feeling, dead, like that, you, you know, you could do it as well. But, you know, is there, is there a, like a, a clear reason to why one wouldn't do it beside possibly failing and being seen as the one who's responsible? Could that be it? That's all I think. And I might mention it in a past video that maybe Kurt Wadsworth is scared of the outcome of the polygraph test because it might mean he's failed and he doesn't want that. But, you know, if you don't want failure, you try to <laughs> avoid it, right? Unless there's just no chance because in this case it's to do with whether you're 
innocent or guilty. And, you know, I know people have said certain additional factors can take place and alter the results, so they're not always reliable, these polygraph tests, but if there's an opportunity to prove something, prove to yourself, prove that you care about Dylan or prove your innocence to stop all this hassling, right? Think about it this way. If Kurt Wadsworth is scared to go out here and go out there and do this and do that because people are after him, maybe to lessen the blow, reduce some of that tension, inner tension, outwards tension towards other people, or to try and clear your name. Because look, look at the LE. They've not really cleared anyone's name properly, have they? Or from at least what we know of in this procedure. So if the odd person who was suspicious in this case and they've been hounded and they've been harassed and they have been negatively impacted by it, what they should have done in the early stages, if they could and if it was possible and if the opportunity was there to do maybe a test or some kind of interview, just something to get rid of that bad stuff, right? I mean, it's only like with if you get called out on uh, YouTube or you get labelled as something and then you do like a little video, just uh, a small response to highlight the current issue or to clear your name or to clear something because if you doubt, it builds and builds and it might lead to more questioning and people start doubting you and then it all goes downhill and then you might think, oh God, this is getting too stressful now, what am I going to do? Oh no. And it's like, well, if you if you were able to act a bit quicker, then it might have not happened, you know? So am I saying Kurt Wadsworth is purely innocent? No, but there are ways around it to maybe highlight that he could be innocent, but by not doing it only makes him more guilty, the way he looks. I mean, he hasn't ran away, so I guess that's something. There's the likes of Don Haightley, he ran off. That's a little bit suspicious, right? right this is why you got to look at this external, maybe unrelated behaviour, how they appear out and about or wherever they are. I mean, I'm sure in the chat or something, whether it be Ellen or Weezer said they had to deal and put up with Kurt Wadsworth's recent attitude or behaviour, calling them out in negative ways or something, being slightly frustrated. But then again, you know, if you've got someone that's being a bit agitated, maybe it's because there's something on their mind deep within the subconscious mind, right? Maybe they're trying to repress something, but it just keeps biting away. You, you never know. And then when people do start acting out in an aggressive way, it could be some kind of self-defence mechanism to push back people from maybe getting too close to the truth, finding out the reality, or they're scared of something themselves because it might impact them if something does get out, right? I mean, like, in a different situation with a different person, if they know who's responsible in this case or know additional people who are out there that are guilty, you know, the pressure could get to them and then they could crack eventually. It just depends, right? I know some other people, what was it like Bob saying that to be in a town in Montello, you know, you need to be a good liar, you need to be hard-faced. Mm, I don't know, because I don't know everyone from Montello, right? Um, I know some other people have said, well, yeah, Montello's full of lots of bad people. Other people, like Ty Corbin said, oh, this place is this place is fine, everyone's all good and stuff. And it's like, okay, so we've got two extremes. Some people saying it's completely bad, other people saying it's completely good. And it's like, that can't be possible. It's going to be in the middle, right? So like with the attitude of this case, this mystery, whatever you want to call it, you got to try and seek the people that are on the fence because they're not, you know, acting completely out of control or on impulse. So you need to look up to them before you look up to the other extremes, right? Was there anything else? Um, well, let's come on what the chat lady says. I've had countless of hours and moments to talk privately with Kurt. I've only experienced consistency and sincerity. They do have alibis. It's easy to get times or things mixed up, but it's not abnormal. However, I can personally feel nothing has given me any reason to doubt him or his family as well as it's being consistent. So, all I would say, Shack Lady, is it's good if you've had somewhat of a consistent positive encounter with Kurt on multiple occasions, right? Is there any way to explain why Kurt wasn't consistent elsewhere on a more public scale? You get what I'm saying? 
Like if it's private and behind closed doors, the person might open up to you because they feel more comfortable, they feel more relaxed and at ease. And then when it's public, they might act differently. And that seems to be the case. But why be truthful and honest privately, but then just lie and cause a lot of confusion in the public eye, such as on YouTube when being interviewed on Pancake's live streams that's what I can't quite understand, you know. Um, if you're not able to speak out because, you know, you just can't because of your own safety or it might harm the case, well, being honest or maybe opening up privately to someone is a, is a big positive that shows that there's a level of trust and comfort. But it's also understandable if they can't say anything public. But if it's, but that's not the case here, is it? It's Talk privately, supposedly. Be consistent. There's a level of truth, sincerity, innocence there. But then act like a complete prat at times. Elsewhere, public, on YouTube platforms. That's not consistent. That just causes more disruption to the case and it doesn't help whatsoever. So if anyone knows or you, the shack lady, knows, can you explain why there's a, there's a difference and such a split between... Same person, but different personality or what they say, okay? Um, what else is there? Mm. Say what you want. Is that, if that, there's an opinion in chat, I've not had anything direct my feelings into a different light. I really feel, in my opinion, that maybe there might be more than one involved person. Only time will tell. I've never believed the narrative of a gay directive many oh why does it do that oh god spazzed out now many uh where are we now mm, pissing me off this when it keeps fucking spazzing out i never believed the narrative yeah okay many may question or disagree but i've had to set aside biases and reevaluate what is presented i don't share a lot and i'm glad i don't not everything should be content I witnessed even the smallest thing spread like fire. I mean, the more appropriate way to reword that like sentence is, I don't share a lot public, and I'm glad I don't. Not everything should be public. Some things should be respected privately out of respect for one's privacy. I think that's how it should be worded, not just content, because like, it's almost like being worded as anything to do with covering a case is just content and just desperation and you know, not true, not not genuine, and then that's just, that's the fucking disaster, right? Um, if you get people, like, desperately begging and begging for information in a really desperate way, then you could say they're just doing it for content, but if it's just simply to say, hey, is there information to cover? Is there awareness to be spread? Not only to keep the case alive, but to keep it on the right track and to help people understand where things are at because maybe not everyone maybe able to access the information elsewhere, maybe because of the country they're from, maybe it's because of the lack of resources or equipment they've got themselves. So if you can, you know, spread the word yourself in a natural way, then that's all that matters. But if it's just being treated as content, then that's, you know, everything just, everything it just becomes a complete battleground, wasteland. And you, what, what do you look at? What do you look for? Because there'll be no hope then, right? So it can go all to shit very quick. Hmm. Like I've stated, not all needs to be on air and a level of integrity should be implemented. I do know some have it and some don't. Yeah. Joseph Lloyd wanted to know why money was put on the books as stated to me personally by Kurt. Early on, only 50 was sent for the phone used to reach out to Kurt. However, Brenner never called. So those who feel there's alternative motives have to say there wasn't. It would be great to know the questions on a lie detector test. It would help to understand why a person failed. LE can make you believe a person is cleared or not have enough evidence to move forward, but it doesn't mean that person is not in their view. This is how the, the woman was caught and charged for killing a nine-year-old out in the Arizona desert. It took years to find his body and even after to make a final close on the case. Just using this as an example... There was lots of stuff that was completely irrelevant to the case and more intrusive than anything. 
drugs and theft is a serious problem in his town. I've talked early on about this issue. Let's just keep the family in our thoughts and prayers for closure and return to their son. Right. I think what we'll do now, after those comments have been read, hopefully it wasn't that long. Apologies if it was. We'll move into my observation now and predictions, okay, because it's quite an important one. Okay, so hopefully most people here right now, welcome if you've just joined, okay. Welcome if you're new to the channel and welcome to the people that might be in the background and then some of the odd few other individuals that might be hiding in the background, whatever, okay. So this can directly apply to the long-time viewers that have stuck around for some time, okay. This might help them, okay, so make sure you're listening. Even if it's just for the next 10 minutes or less, just put aside the chat and just focus on the video, if it's causing any issues. I'm just gonna give you my um, analysis of where things are going and where they're gonna head, okay? Okay, it's kind of like inevitable. In I can't say the word, inevitable, right? So, as of recent time, there seems to be a sudden surge and wave of new information, where that new information has been long-standing, and some of it has been discussed in the early days on other channels by certain people. Well, obviously, because I wasn't there present to hear, to watch at the time, it's new to me now. So does it make me question everything? Does it make, does it set me back and make me think, oh, but I thought I always knew it as that. I was always under the impression it was because of that. Yeah, that's what can happen, right? Has it happened previously in the past? Yes, but it was on a very small scale and it was more, you can't say controlled, but naturally, it was on a smaller scale, right? I'd be covering a video, I'd bring up a point, I'd refer back to something, an event, supposed fact, a person, whatever it may be, and then there was someone in the live chat or in the comment section afterwards that corrected me, which is, yes, of course, a good thing. If it's being corrected with a fact and they're saying the truth, then that's, that's of course, good. But maybe sometimes there is people giving, giving different responses with their own opinions and rumours which conflicted with what I knew of, okay? But I still listened, of course. Some things were resolved, other things weren't, so it just kind of remained uneven and unknown of. And in recent time now, there's been more of that where in the last couple of videos, I've been saying this or that, bringing points back up once again, they've been corrected, additional information has been added, the complete alternative of what I've always known it by, and it's like, oh, wow. And first of all, it was like, where did you hear all this from? Like, how do all these people suddenly advance and gain all this knowledge in a very short space of time, in a, within every couple of days, and why now all of a sudden? Do you get what I'm saying? Maybe there's some people in the chat that have noticed other people talk more now or seem to know more now. And that could well be a good thing, but it's like, where did they get it all from in such a small space of time? And why now? Why not two weeks ago? Why just like recent? That's what I just don't quite understand. But then, of course, one of the side reasons, and it's quite a big one, to why d there's a lot of information going about, and Tom Evans highlighted it, acknowledged it, was because you're getting all these new people coming on in, or semi-regular people, like Mini-Me, uh, some, some other new viewers from Salty Pancakes channel, this Not For You account. You could, you could argue, why are they all here now? It could be for numerous reasons, of course. People want to, natural, that's good, that's appreciated. But I think what you've got to take in mind, you know, specifically for the long-time viewers on my channel, where these others may have not been present back then, that's because they were elsewhere on other people's channels when there was other, I guess, maybe arguably more important, more popular live streams going on. So that's where they were at. But with time with the case dragging on, people losing interest, other people maybe feeling it's got to a point where there's no hope and some thinking it's just a matter of time, they go off different way waves, right? And the audience they had at some point who could still be around because they want to hear about the case and want more from it, 
they seek other places to come to, like seeking refuge. And because of course, my videos, although maybe not always as hard hitting as other people's, because I'm really the only, arguably one less, less uh, I can't talk, because I'm arguably the last one standing that does, in a way, like, you can't really say live streams, because it's not literally a live stream, but a live video premiere. It's really the only other beacon, right? You get what I'm saying? Like, if you had a desert full of flashing lights, you might go to one or the other, right? And people might spread out. You take all those lights away so there's only one remaining, you're going to shine above everyone else and not always for the uh, right reasons. Or maybe um, you just stand out more because there's nowhere else for anyone else to go. So they all come here and crowd. And maybe that's what's happening right now. So all that information, all those rumours and talk and gossip is all coming here, maybe clouding the atmosphere. So for the regular viewers that have been around for some time and it's been somewhat quiet, maybe a bit peaceful, it's been disturbed all of a sudden. Can it, can it ease off? Of course, yes. Can it reach a baseline where it's not as bad? Yeah, that can happen as well. Okay, however that makes sense, first of all, to why there's been like a boost in information talks about and some waves of people. Statistically speaking, you can't directly say everyone's come here because arguably, statistically, that's gone down. But maybe the, the bigger characters, the people with uh, stronger personalities and maybe more knowledge or more gossip have come, right? So the chat itself may feel very busy, very, what else could you word it? Just stiff, um, heavy, you know, like drowned out. But when you look at the, the actual amount of people watching, it's not as high as in the past. To put it into perspective, at some points in the past where there might have been about 40 to 50, maybe 60 people watching the chat, wasn't that full, like the live chat, the text, it wasn't overwhelming. Whereas now there's about 20 to 30 people watching, so it has dropped, but there is more going on in the live chat and that just might be the specific people that are coming on over. The more die-hard uh, fans, the more die-hard people more interested in the case and want it to be solved, so there's a lot more talking going on, right? What I will say is, and this is just based off my experience of damage limitation, because the reality of me in any situation, any place, any time, that's what I've basically always had to do. It could be a video game, it could be real life damage limitation. It's not always about what doesn't kill you makes you strong. It's just simply move this, move that aside, brush this away, brush that away, walk away, even if it's like a fucking coward to avoid any more damage. And how does that apply? Could apply physically, could it apply psychologically, it could apply in just terms of not getting confused. In a case like this, right, a literal case like this, with all this information going about, whilst at first it might seem like a positive, oh, you're hearing all this now. It's like, could it cloud your judgment? Could it cause disruption to your mind, to your thoughts, to how you've suspected this case to be? I mean, it's good at times if people challenge your points or what you know of because it might lead to a new finding, new information, a new answer, the actual truth coming out and it might dispel the lies you were told from the past but for the people that might just be on, on the fence or use common sense or only know a limited amount about the case but the limited stuff they know is more factual, that could negatively impact them with all this talk going on kind of in the background right in the live chat right and people can say that's not the case but think of it like this most of the time in the past you heard about all the drama going on people attacking one another and I was like who's this who's that I don't know what's going on I'll keep away keep my head down keep on talking about the case right but because all those other channels on doing what they're doing as much now, then that's why it's coming here, because it's the last known stronghold, right? So maybe in the eyes of some people, they want this castle to crumble, they want it to implode on itself, that's not going to happen, right? 
the catalyst what would cause more disruption, more chaos would be in a live stream, live interview format in which you invite people on. That's when, not the channel, but more the current status, the current presence of people would be eliminated. You know, if this, the format changed now and people could come on, those characters we're talking about, it would be a complete disaster. It would be game over. It would be death. Okay? That's not going to happen. So, people want to call me an awkward twat, you can call me an awkward twat. Okay? But yeah. How I've responded, at least, to all this which is going on or being talked about, I've, I've listened to the best I can. It can be a bit hard at times considering doing that video and all that time beforehand, questioning all this, talking all about that in a video, then uploading it, then sitting back, right, and then having to process more information, that can be a bit tricky at times, right? Um, if you're a viewer, and maybe one of the one of the reasons at least to why you're present is to take in the information or hear from a different point of view, a different idea, um, it might be a, a bit easier to process. Well, because of make, me making the video and then also having to process information, it's like doing two things instead of one. So, you know, I limit it to an extent, right? And um, really, when I've heard about all this going on, all this noise, because it kind of feels like noise because there's a lot of it. I mean, you see all this text appearing on the screen, right? I mean, if it was verbal, it'd probably shout, 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 over talk one another, which would be even worse to try and understand, right? But it's like, okay, I hear, I hear you about that, I hear you about that, but then, you know, I'm just seeing all these patterns, like, I can't really put everything into words, but I'm just seeing all these patterns, you know, it's like, technically, I don't know what's going on, but I do, right, I know the outcome of what can happen, based off from previous things, so, it's about avoiding history repeating itself, okay, and if you wonder what, like, the methods are, you know, we need to get a bit wacky, we need to go, if we need to go dark, we go dark, Okay, and that will dispel of humans, believe me. Okay, that, that's guaranteed, right? But all I'd say is, whether it be new viewers or regulars, and you're listening to all this information going on by all these other characters and people, you can listen to it if you want, but don't internalise it fully. Still maintain a level of resistance, but in the right way. Try not get brainwashed. Do not get indoctrinated, okay? If you think about it, if there's been disruption elsewhere by certain people, whoever they are, and if just by chance they were here right now, the same could happen. But if you resist against it, then it's just not going to happen. They don't get their way, right? So it's an inner, inner conflict, right? None of this is necessary. None of this needs to happen, but it is, right? And people can say, don't talk about it, don't do this, don't do that. Well, yeah, but it'll just build and build in the background, right? I mean, what would be a good example? Let me just use a quick example. Like when you get video games or you get films, they might take a character away, they might add a different one to tick all the boxes, you know what I'm saying? And at first, it might only be a minor change, right? And then the next time, there's another change. And you'll be told, oh, it doesn't matter, don't complain, don't focus on it, just enjoy, just do this, do that, enjoy life, well, whatever. And over time, slowly, it constricts like a viper, and more and more is changed, more and more is added to the point where you look back at that product, whatever it is, and you think, what am I looking at now? I just don't understand, right? And it's that snowball effect. Kind of like with the UK, okay, okay, let this, let, let this, let that happen, let this change, let that change. And you might not resist too soon, and eventually down the line, you, you stood there walking around and you think, is this still the UK? Or am I in a different country? You know, things like that can happen. It's a snowball effect. So when it comes to YouTube, when it comes to this case, this community, and maybe some people within it, I don't know what percentage, because I'm not an expert there. I've not done research regarding that, but it can happen as well. So yeah, listen, take notes, but don't get too deep or don't get, don't internalize too much because it might cause more harm to you down the line, right? If it causes you confusion, if it causes you to doubt and question everything, then it kind of undoes possible progress made in this case. I don't know, people could say, well, what progress 
has there been any progress at all outside of the um, atmosphere within the YouTube part. I mean, the progress you could say is some things might have been cleared up, uh, at least some maps and videos and routes and possibilities have been added, right? I mean, at least from my point of view, when um, things have developed in this case, maybe like when listening to the Candice Cooley interviews of how things may have played out, and I have said, oh wait, that's exactly what I said in the early days when I was doing my coverage, when I didn't know the actual facts or I didn't know the actual truth because it hadn't come out yet. So I came up with my own ideas, um, possibilities, outcomes, and it just so happened to match with what Candice Cooley said at a later point. So in a way, unintentional, unplanned progress was made or at least reinforced by the actual facts coming out later down the line, right? So that's why, especially within the Kenny Veach case, whilst a lot of that was talking and guessing and theorising and coming up with different ideas and concepts, at some points down the line, it was actually reinforced with proper evidence or more hard evidence, visual, a uh, screenshot of this or that to prove this and that, right? Can the same happen within the Dylan Rouse case? In some way it can, maybe not direct, as direct as the Kenny Veach case, but you know, how about this, like, if Candice Cooley is supposedly going to do uh, an update video interview with East Idaho News coming soon or whenever that is, that could clear up some confusion, it might reinforce, you never know, the odd point made what I said previously in one of my map analysis videos, in one of my narration ones, it could tie in line, you never know, right? So really, in between these updates, what's really happening? That's what you got a question, right? And with humans overall. Um, in the early days, it could have been excused. It was people coming up with different ideas, concepts, trying to make sense of everything. Some people trying to actually physically help in some way. Fast forward, that continues. Maybe some people push it a bit too far. Um, maybe. But I would say around the time of where Candice Cooley went quiet, truly went quiet, which was months ago now, probably. From then till now, what's actually happened? Not as much. And even people have left comments and comments once again, over, over and over saying, what's actually happened since? Nothing. You could add the following question on, then why are you here? You know what I'm saying? People are here, and I don't mean people here in this chat. People just in the community are still present because they're interested in the case and they still want to make sense of it. They don't want to wait. So they want to try and find answers earlier, which I guess is normal human behavior in a way, right? And theorizing, questioning and coming up with ideas is positive. In the process, in the space of silence, if you can keep the case alive or at least up for debate, up for discussion, keep it on the top page, keep it in the search engine. Just like how Candice Cooley has said in the past with interviews, you know, type it in on Google, get Dylan's name out there, get Dylan's farm and location out there so more people can hear about it, research and stuff and etc. right? Same with YouTube. You, know, you just keep hammering on, but in a natural way. You question a lot, you come up with different ideas in between. For some, it could be seen as entertainment, but innocent entertainment without anyone really being harmed, right? Just like how people might listen to podcasts or listen to mysteries, spooky stories, kind of the same thing in a way, you're listening. Maybe it's visually told as well, that's more unique, right? But what about the other sets of people? What are they doing in between this silence? Well, they're technically talking about Dylan, Arguably, they're talking about unrelated stuff within Dylan, Dylan's case. They're talking more about the external people and maybe possible people of interest at some point in time and they're digging deep into their lives and questioning this and that. And it's like, okay, maybe this person, that person has done bad things in the past. Is it necessary to keep digging or to keep referring back to it, to keep questioning and arguing about it? Yes, no. If you strongly believe that it it leads to Dylan's disappearance, then maybe it's understandable, but 
if it doesn't link to Dylan's disappearance whatsoever. Maybe there was a negative experience experienced by Dylan and that person in the past, but if it's got nothing to do with Dylan's disappearance, then does it really need to be talked about? Just a lot, do you call it white noise or brown noise or black noise? I don't know what which one you call it, right? Is there another one called grey noise? I mean, is it to do with ASMR that, or is it to do with like just hearing a lot of stuff, but it's not really, it's not much of use, right? So I think you probably can split it down the middle, right? On the left hand side, you got people trying to keep the case alive, keep it up for discussion come out with different ideas and possibilities, but not treating them as facts, making it very clear it's just talking and discussing, right? And then maybe down the line it is reinforced, some of those points, by actual news updates, okay? But there's a natural behaviour and pattern around that stuff. Then on the right-hand side, you've got the people that kind of talk about the case but they cause more disruption because they're not coming up with ideas or theories, but they're more looking at the odd rumour or past event or gossip and then turning it into a fact or turning it into a way that it links with Dylan when it may not. And then that disrupts the case overall, right? If you've got a new person coming on in, on the left hand side they can walk in and hear about these different ideas, it's like, oh, okay, but is any of it true? Not yet. And it's like, okay, I understand. You might agree, you might not. You go into the door on the other side, you walk in and it's like, this happened, that's happened. Well, actually this happened back then. And it's like, how do you know so much when you're not really that involved or you're not actually there? Maybe it's because of external contacts they've got a hold of, which could be the case and probably is. That person comes in, that presence of factual, 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 just based off the language used, not clear or identified, right? I mean, all I will say is not to the same degree, not to the same extremity, but the way the shack lady has worded things, text base, has been arguably more understandable and clearer than when she's spoken in her videos right? Whether you're talking about an actual fact or just a theory. That's what I've come to the conclusion of, at least, okay? You might disagree, but that's the way I say it. Um, I don't know if I apply both verbally and text-based when it comes to using the appropriate language. I mean, at least in the Kenny Beach case, that's what I definitely tried doing, right? Because especially when you've got to respond back to past comments and you say well from my knowledge up until now or from what I know of till this point this is how it's gone this is what we've known right I think well it's probably because when I have answered questions it's been more in the videos because we've been looking at the comments so I've not been you know responding or typing the same way as much and I think with the live chat I think questions are answered in the process of that so there's less questions in the comments because they're being answered in the live chat so that's probably why you've seen that whereas if you change the video structure and say it's you just a video and not a live stream or a live premiere then it would just lead to I guess more questions down below and more opportunities to respond that way but yeah just as a one last summary just in case you can't quite follow if you're a regular viewer and you feel there is a current presence, a current force of disruption for whatever reason, that what's happened in the past and elsewhere on other channels is starting to happen here, resist against it, don't be brainwashed, don't be indoctrinated, it'll be under control, okay? That's why I say it. Um, Tom Evans sees it as a positive, of course, but just um, be a little bit wary, Tom, because, you know, anything can happen in this case. I know some people have said that in this case you can't trust anyone. I and mean, when you get to that stage, that's really not a good thing, is it? A good situation to be in. If you can't trust anyone, how can any progress be made? And, and this is the thing, when it comes to a case or just like a serious event in life, 
at some point with someone, there's got to be a level of trust put into someone in hopes that something can come out of it, a positive result, because if not, and you don't trust anyone, then really nothing will happen, or everyone will be doing their own little individual different things that differ from one another, and it, you'd just be going around in circles and circles. And I know people have said that in this case, all, all that needs to happen is everyone gets together and is in total agreement. I can safely say with high confidence that will never happen, okay? That's not, be, that's not me just being negative, it's me being realistic, right? I've seen it in the past. It wasn't as bad, it wasn't as negative, but there was still disagreements in the Kenny Veach case between Jeff Clark, Jay Chuck, Jay Silverheels, and maybe Sean Horlacher all had different ideas, reasonings, right, behind the case of Kenny, but they couldn't quite all be in a line with one another, all in consensus. And after, what, like, is it two, three years now? Has there been any resolution? Has there been any consensus? No, not really. So if that doesn't happen there, with a smaller, smaller, smaller pool of people, and arguably less ego, technically, and it still didn't work out there, how do you honestly think it's gonna work in this case, in this community? It's not. And like how, how I said, in certain situations, damage has already been done, right? Maybe people have left their imprint on the case for good and bad reasons, it might catch up with them down the line, you never know, but, We've already witnessed allegiances being pledged, people joining forces with one another. First time round, sounds good. It goes wrong, it backfires. People turn on one another, then they dispel. And then they get back together again. And then something bad happens to one another, maybe. And then they form back at a later point, right? Very unstable, lack of certainty lack of stability, right? So, you think about the trust-related part, processing of information, handling it, handling it, dealing with it, and you gotta share that, or maybe tell someone, and those other people have backstabbed you. It's like, you can't tell them, can you? Because they'll probably just screw everything up or do something manipulative, right? Have I had any of these major trust issues with people no, because I didn't associate myself directly with everyone, technically speaking, right? Maybe by some I'm seen as the black sheep, right? But it's just more neutral with other people, right? So there's no trouble caused. If, if they want to try and solve the case, they can. As long as it doesn't disrupt me, then I won't disrupt them. Just keep it like that, right? So there's not been that feeling of being screwed or used. It might also be because back in the past, I have been extensively fucked from all angles. Not literally, no, 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 I'm not one of them, but it's happened. So it's formed a level of deadness. It's formed a level of high alert. So basically it takes me 0.5 seconds to get an idea about the odd few people here and there in life, okay? So that's why certain things can be prevented. That's why some things haven't completely gone to shit, right? Whereas elsewhere, it may have done, okay? So, there could be a positive out of this video because it wasn't, I, even though it sounds a bit weird me saying it, even though it didn't seem as interesting, this video, it might have actually put people off watching. You never know. So, like, some of the people that might have issues with others, they might no longer be present because they got tired or they might have fallen asleep. I know some people have said, God, your videos make me sleepy. I'll be honest, um, one time in the past when I was watching, you know, the live premiere like other people were, I actually almost fell asleep listening to my video when I was talking. I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign, but there you go. Just how it is. Um, I guess it just depends what happens next. And as I said, I don't know where, do you know like when you get a natural disaster, how you can sense and feel f things aren't right, like, or things are different. 
just before it actually happens, the disaster, you get the birds flying about in the sky, other animals acting out, maybe some people being a bit different in behaviour. It's like something's coming. And that's maybe how it seems within the Dylan Brown's case. Like, these people left, right and centre are flocking over here. Pancakes is having a mini meltdown here and there, becoming a bit flat. Then Doug is suddenly changing in allegiance with others. But everyone's all suddenly, or a few people are all grouping up all of a sudden against you know who, the Dark Force. Uh, but then you've got the likes of the Ty, the, the big talker, and then some others in between that have just drifted away. Then you've got the likes of Lance, who's been doing his own thing and maybe for the most part of it, keeping his head down, getting on with it and searching. Now that's suddenly faded out too. And it's like, well, this feels a bit weird. It feels like a bit of almost like an apocalypse, right? Things are dying, people are changing. Things seem a little bit unnatural, a bit weird, a little bit uncertain as to what will happen next, the next move, right? But the key line, what people have been using uh, in repetition was, Time will tell. Time will tell. We'll see what happens next. We'll, we'll await for next week. We'll await for what that meeting is with Candice Cooley. Something's going to come out soon. It's like people are waiting and anticipating something to happen, right? Gripping onto it. Am I like that? No. That's why I'm still doing these videos. You know, if I truly felt like a a pure head has been reached, pure certainty and a complete conclusion, then there would be no need to cover anymore, right? But because it's still uncertain, other angles need to be looked at, right? So whilst maybe other people at times were really focused on some stuff or some people, and it's not directly to do with Dylan and they're attacking one another, I was looking at the back door route into the case with some individuals, right? And people could say, it's, it's okay finding an alternative route, a different path, the longer, darker one, but what's down there? What does it lead to? And some people would say, nothing. But what it has led to with time is some people reaching out, right? You think about it, providing it's natural, it's actually better for people to reach out to you than you reaching out to them. They've reached out to you for a reason, right? Because they really need to share something. They want to maybe clear something up, right? It's natural. It's by choice. They want to do what they do. If it's the other way around where you go after people questioning and questioning whilst that is a method and that can be a job like, like with news crews and all that and stuff or journalist or investigator, yeah, 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 that's what you're supposed to do, that's your job, that's your role. It's not as natural though, is it? Sure, maybe you build a report with someone that can answer questions but, you know, you're being the catalyst, right? Literally, you're having to do everything, juggle this and juggle that. Whereas, if it can be equally shared and spread out within a case like this or any other where you might do so much and they do some as well, it doesn't feel as heavy. Maybe the load is lightened. Maybe the pressure is eased. That's completely indirect psychological positive and advantage you can get from that, right? You know, someone like the Shack Lady, we'll just use her as an example, okay, psychologically speaking. The methods and styles she's done is maybe maybe the shack lady can actually um, argue this and say people have reached out to her, but it feels like she's reached out to people. Like how uh, she may have she might have reached out to Candice Cooley at some point, maybe she might have reached out to Kurt. She may have reached out to uh, Pancakes, etc., etc. Right, and then she's invited people onto her show with these deadlines and these schedules, sometimes it's not worked, sometimes things have changed or gone wrong, and then other times it's it has taken place, but then some people have taken control, taken over, so that's added pressure. On top of maybe if being threatened or external people not agreeing with things, and it's leading to other stuff going on. And then her previously, during a time of when she was doing it more consecutively and for longer periods, these streams, she said it got tiring, if she does have health issues as well or if other stuff's going on in the background and things are getting busy, it can become very wearing, right? And because the reason why coverage has been done, at least 
from her side is because she's put in quite a bit of effort, the shack lady, having to reach out to this person, having to interview that person, having to ask questions here, there, emails, messages, I don't know, all kinds of stuff, right? It might become tiring. Whereas I'd say on my channel, arguably in terms of keeping the case alive and doing the videos over and over again, trying to look at every different angle, that requires a lot of stamina, right? Um, at least one of the side reasons to why it was doable for this long, at least from, what is it, June to, um, maybe June up to near Christmas, that was because of a family psychological issue, mental breakdown and all that, right? So uh, you, you do other stuff in, in the background to uh, get away from it, to distract yourself. And obviously it's done every single day because you're in the presence of it every single day. So you distract yourself and it was somewhat successful, right? And it gets to that point where although the, uh, some issues in the background may not exist anymore, because you've gotten into such a rhythm and procedure of doing it, it might be hard to stop or it might... Um, you might just be used to doing it, just like how if you have uh, a workout schedule with lifting weights, if you do it so often, so frequent, but maybe spaced out so you're not as tired physically, so you let muscle heal. After so long of doing it, you might think it's weird to stop, right? Obviously, you'll, you'll have to stop at some point if there's a reason, such as in a case like this, if it's solved or it reaches ahead, then there's no need to continue covering it, right? Because if you covered it anymore, then it's like, why are you dragging it out? Like, why are you straining it? That's not natural, that's not normal. But we haven't got to that stage yet, so don't need to be focusing on that. But um, yeah, by covering um, the case and doing these videos back to back, it has been quite relentless, right? And I don't think maybe other humans might could be able to do it. Like, okay, you might get some more professional more bigger and more established channels out there that might, you know, do videos nearly every single day, right? But their videos are like seven to 10 minutes long and it might just be a gaming clip or a gaming highlight. This is full on in depth, one hour, two hour videos every single day. That's not normal, technically. Humans technically wouldn't be able to do that without getting tired at some point, really tired. But maybe it's because of their, my situation previous, um, it's like that additional boost or uh, deeper reason to keep doing it, maybe. Uh, but yeah, linking back to, um, you put that aside, that actual energy and stamina, right? The actual coverage of the case, because the viewers on my channel have played quite a big part as well and have been quite useful too with what they know if they've scouted out information or if they've collected stuff from what they've heard and then kind of put it into play here, but not all at once over time in the past. So it was easier to handle, it was easier to collect and try and understand and compare and contrast. It wasn't like I had to do everything, right? I mean, to an extent, maybe you should do everything because you're the one creating the videos and uploading this and covering this and covering that. And then the other people should just be able to sit back and watch. But in maybe some areas where that doesn't apply, it does elsewhere in which I'm not giving people the role and task to be a moderator on my channel where people have got yet an additional responsibility on top of everything else in life to keep up with this, to keep up with that, to monitor this and monitor that. You shouldn't have to be uh, that alert, right? You should be able to just relax to an extent, maybe. Okay, maybe that's not happened in recent time, but you know, on average, it's it's somewhat relaxed, right? And if you put someone as a moderator, then it could go wrong, they could become corrupt, or they just feel like, oh, they've got yet something else to do and they can't just sit back and listen, right? So you, you take that away, so it means there's less unnecessary energy exerted there, right? But referring back to how the uh, I guess the the methods, the structure of this case are spread. Okay, you, one covers the video or a certain topic or theme to talk about and then people in the chat might share their additional thoughts and ideas 
which might add on to this video. Oh my God, that just scared the shit out of me. So I was just doing a video and then just like some, um, how do I describe it? A bear appeared in the window. So about that, I had to cut it, like looking through the window of the bedroom and then a, a bear appeared on the other side of the window. Not ground level, but literally high up. It just appeared hovering. So I, I, um, it was kind of weird to explain, but like there was a stick and it was being wobbled about. So yeah, the bears appeared. Is it a bear? Well, yeah, well, kind of, it's uh, an Ewok, okay? This hood does lift up. I mean, maybe this is what was needed at the start of this video, right? Because of its eyes hypnotizing. If it, used, if it was used when there's resistance, you could just hover it around and say, you will listen to me, you will not show resistance, you will lessen that attitude and you will be a good boy, a good girl, yeah. If that could work, then maybe we'll introduce that more in the future, okay? Maybe this little bear has unknown powers. There you go. I'm gonna wave. There you go. I don't know where he's gonna stand, but yeah. So let's just, I'd, I've kind of like lost my flow now when talking because of that uh, distraction, but if we just fast forward and summarize, right, at least on my channel, because it's been spread, I can do coverage, I can spread awareness on the case and look at a certain topic theme and dig deep and analyze certain language to look for any slip ups, mess ups, and there's a lot behind it. But because of the viewers, what they know of and what they've done, they've helped as well, of course. Um, and then with the other people in the background that might have reached out at a certain point, they've provided their own point of view, but in a natural way without it being forced, right? So that's helped as well. And then some maybe additional media as well or a different boots on ground look. That concept, that is the best concept to have. Has it truly happened in the Dylan Rouse case? Kind of, kind of, but not to the level of the Kenny Veach case where you had hikers personally going out there and on the odd occasion going out there to be able to provide imagery and footage to me or to anyone else who could make sense of it that was good of them of course they went out there because they wanted to see it for themselves and because they could they can um and they wanted to they were good at being able to get there and to walk about because they've got the fitness or they've got the stamina, they've got the correct gear, they've got this and that. So it's practical for them. But in terms of, I guess, the actual processing of the footage or trying to make sense of it or trying to look for any unseen stuff within it, that's where their limitations arguably were at. So that's why other people who weren't doing the boots on ground could look at this. So it complements with one another. And... I'd say in a small way of talking about it in the Dylan Rounds case, it's kind of happened, not directly in searching for Dylan, but just becoming a bit more familiar with the area or the likes of Montello, right? The odd person has been helpful there. So you think about it, the more spread out it is, the less exhausting it is on just one person. So to a degree, at least with Within, uh, with on, uh, within my channel and the people present, they've been able to work together. As with some of the viewers here and there that have said they don't agree with what I've always said, maybe Mama Down Under said that at one point, she still is able to understand and share her thoughts without really anything going wrong. So, technically, a certain type of people or a certain amount of people can somewhat work together within this case successfully right, without really any friction or tension. It's just that it's the failure and inability to do so and apply it on a bigger scale with all the others out there trying to work with one another. That's not worked, it hasn't worked and it probably will never work. But with the smaller people that are present right now and more maybe so back in the past when you were regulars, okay, they were able to all communicate with one another even when they didn't always agree and it just worked right so maybe we are a microcosm a microcosmic prototype of what will never happen in the case on a bigger scale that's how you could word it i think that's what we'll conclude with in this video okay i said because of timing issues i couldn't like really plan anything out today
But I think... Let's do a poll right now. It, it's like a last minute poll, so vote as fast as possible, okay? Just so then I know what direction to go in next for the next video, providing if it's still possible and valid to do, of course. If not, I'll do the other voted one. What video do you want to see next? Do you want to see um, the map analysis video of the campus? out there, Little Pigeon Mountain, try and explain that or visualise it? Or would you want to see the breakdown analysis of footage at the grain shed, but looking at the dirt mound and seeing if anything stands out to me, giving my thoughts and opinions? Which one would you want to see? I'll give a third option. Do you just want to see a more casual, laid-back video? where it can be still talking about Dylan, but then there's a subsection or the after section where it's more to do with the wacky stuff. That could also dispel resistance. It could make it a bit more calmer for some and it could also reduce tension and uh, just make it a bit more fun. And uh, we've done the short videos in between, of course, standalone ones, which could be maybe um, more appropriate in a way, but it's more direct towards someone, right? But feel free to vote, okay? And then I know which video to cover next, and then we'll see what happens next, of course. Um, yeah, the next uh, the next little short video I need to do, because like this is the thing. I know some of the viewers, maybe from Pancakes, have come on over and said that the YouTube streets have been a bit of a mess or a bit of a disaster. It's, it's under control, you know. You, if you think the YouTube community is a little bit dark, dull, dim lit, you know, it will start glowing shortly, okay? It'll, it'll illuminate in a red candescent light. Why? Because, you know, YouTube streets are obviously turning into the red light district. No, Wes isn't performing. Joseph isn't on the pole, not right now. He's maybe out of order at this moment in time. Wes is too busy dominating all the lands present around. Though, I'm still here, okay? Has this become the new red light district of YouTube? Yes, it has. So, Kay Lee, yeah. Kaylee. Hmm? You like when I call you that, Kaylee? Yeah, I hope so. That was the American honey because they're new viewers. Yeah, dodgy things will happen, right? Speaking of dodgy, you know, if you're new to the channel here, so, um, well, I guess Mini Me has been around for some time, but I guess it can apply to her as well. Mini Me, American Honey, um, Kaylee. If you want to be dodgy, you can be dodgy. Bella V, I could say the same to her, but you know, she's already admitted in one of the past videos she said she's dodgy, which is interesting, right? So it's all under control. But yeah, the whole red light district thing, that's because there seems to be a contract which has formed between me and Bella V. How did it come about? I have no clue, but the contract has been drawn up. And basically, if I misbehave, Bella V will give me a formal warning or something, followed by two written warnings. And then I think if I misbehave again, there's another warning and then eventually I'm fired. Um, all I wanna know is Bella V, if I'm fired, do I pack the blanket with me in the little cardboard box as I walk away? Or do I not get given that? Let me know, okay? Also, Bella V did say there's room for negotiation. If I'm on good behaviour, I'll be upgraded from a BH to a slut, okay? Obviously, my dreams and aspirations are to get to the pinnacle, the top of life, from a bitch to a whore. Warlike whore. You know, that's what it's all about, right? So, obviously, if you can help me get to that status, that point, that'll be much appreciated, okay? Blessings all around, of course. Um, and, yeah, if there's any more updates with uh, Bella V, whether it be her um, cycle, <coughs> I mean, behaviour changes and stuff, or any new developments, that can be arranged. If Kaylee needs any more attention, girl, then maybe that will take place. But I think... There is a, another person that needs to be covered, right? 
not Candice Cooley, but the other Candice. Candice, Can, Candy, Candace. Oh shit, I said that wrong. I don't know how you quite say the name because it starts sounding like I'm saying candies. People in the chat have said that with time. It starts sounding like I'm saying to me. I was like, when I say fairies, fairies, fairy, fairies. God, it gets a bit confusing, right? That's what we don't want, but it's, it's, it's harmless, right? So there's another Candice, Candace, that needs to be um, covered. She says she wants a psychopath coverage. Don't worry, I can provide that. Don't you worry, okay? You know, if anyone's got trouble right now, you know, just let me know. Dr. Raff is here. At any point you need a service, I will unzip myself. My bag of tools, of course. There's all kinds of props in there, right? It's all under control, right? So I think we'll leave it there for now. Thanks for watching. I uh, appreciate people that have still managed to stick around despite maybe uh, negative things going on which might put them off watching or put them off at times in other ways and obviously uh, welcome to uh, the new reviewers we will see what happens next if there's anything if there's any like breaking news that will always be covered first okay if there are videos that are in place but there's breaking news it, that will surpass it right just so you know for the future with cases so it's a bit late now i'll see you next time thanks for watching goodbye and good night for now